a couple of years ago when I was over in Texas, I had my first ever banana pudding. And I'm not a big fan of banana flavored things. I don't really like banana flavored desserts generally. I was in Terry Black's in Austin. I saw the banana pudding. I knew it was really popular, particularly in the Texas barbecue world or in the barbecue world and typically in the South. So I got it, had my big tray of barbecue and tucked into that banana pudding and I was just blown away by how good it was. It was really cold, it was really sweet, and it was perfect to finish off a tray of fatty, rich, savory barbecue. So it couldn't really be more simple. You may have seen me make this recipe on my video where I showed you how I run a pop-up. I'm gonna go into a bit more detail in this video. And the first thing we need to do is make the custard. So I'm gonna go in with a cup and a half of milk, which is about 325 milliliters. I'm using whole milk. And then we're gonna go in with a can of sweetened condensed milk. This is 397 grams, which I think is a 14 ounce can if you're in the States. And make sure you don't confuse this with evaporated milk. And just pour that all in. And also this is basically just the Magnolia Bakery recipe with a few little changes that I've made, but really it's just that recipe. And I'm hoping that I bring it to an audience of people, particularly in the UK, who maybe have never had banana pudding, people who like barbecue that want to give it a try. So we've got our milk in, we've got our condensed milk in. Next thing we're gonna go in with is some Jello. This is vanilla Jello. Now I know some of you are gonna go wild in the comments for me using boxed vanilla Jello instead of making my own vanilla custard, but I know of plenty of places that use the vanilla Jello in their banana pudding and many, many people like it. So by all means, drop a comment below if you prefer to make your own custard. I like to use the box stuff and I'll put a link below where you can buy this in the UK. It's about two pounds. Sometimes they're on offer from places like American Grocer. There'll be a link below as to where you can get it. And before we put that in, I'm just gonna incorporate the milk and the condensed milk together. Try my best not to spill it all. I did this in my pop-up video. I just didn't use a big enough bowl. What's wrong with me? Right, so the milk and the condensed milk are fully combined. And now I'm just gonna dump in my vanilla jello. And definitely, definitely, definitely do not use the banana flavor jello. That really does taste like artificial banana flavor. We're gonna use real bananas in this, so at least there's gonna be something natural in there. Banana pudding is not made with banana jello. Well, of course you can do, but it's traditionally made with vanilla custard. So all of those ingredients are combined, the jello, the milk, and the condensed milk. This will go into the fridge for about an hour, maybe to set. You'll know when it's ready, when it kind of firms up, when you give it a jiggle, it doesn't really move, just kind of wobbles a little bit. Stick a lid on it, put it in the fridge. When it's ready to come out, we will get onto the next stage. Right, so about an hour later, you can see that our jello is set. And the next thing we're gonna do is add some cream. So I've got some double cream here, some heavy whipping cream. This is actually the extra thick cream from Tesco. And I'm using about 900 milliliters or three cups. And I really like the extra thick cream, the one from Tesco's here in the UK, because it's already pretty thick and it doesn't take too much time to whip up. So we'll get that into the stand mixer, whip it up nice and thick. And that is looking pretty good. As you can see, the cream is nice and stiff. That's gonna really help us get a nice fluffy texture at the end. Traditionally, you just use the custard when you're making banana pudding, but adding in the whipped cream element really gives you a really delicious fluffy texture. To me, that's what makes banana pudding so good. So I definitely recommend giving this method a try. Right. So we've got our whipped cream and we have our custard. And now we're gonna fold this jello into our whipped cream, but we're gonna do it in a real folding motion so we don't collapse all the air that we've built up in the whipped cream, otherwise it will just end up like single cream or double cream again. So I'm not very good at doing this to be honest, but I'm gonna take a little bit of my jello and just maybe a little bit more, put it in, and then just using a folding motion, trying to be quite gentle with it, try and incorporate the jello into the whipped cream, just really try not to collapse all the whipped up cream. I want it to stay as fluffy as possible. Once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to go. So I wouldn't say that these two ingredients are mixed together. So there are bits of just cream and little bits of just jello. So it's still pretty thick, it holds up. And again, this might not look like the banana pudding that you're used to, but 
trust me. So the next thing we are gonna need is some vanilla wafers. If you're in the US, you're probably very familiar with these. If you're not in the US, you probably not. But for me, these are the best thing and the traditional thing to use in banana pudding. They go nice and soft and cakey once they're mixed with the cream and left to set for a while. You can buy these in the UK. I got this box for about 550. They're quite often on offer. I'll drop a link below as to where you can buy them. And I definitely recommend giving it a go. However, you can definitely just use those sponge fingers that we have here in the UK, often used for things like trifle and tiramisu. Very similar in texture, a little bit sweeter, not as much vanilla flavor, but they work just as well. And when I haven't been able to get hold of vanilla wafers in the UK, I've just used those and they are almost just as good. You wouldn't know the difference. By the time everything's made up, and portioned out. I'd be surprised if anyone could tell a difference, but I have these on hand, so I'm gonna make it this way. And before we get into making this, I'm just gonna take a couple of these Nilla wafers and put them to the side. We'll use those later. A lot of people just make up individual portions in something like this or something a little bit taller of banana pudding. Layer it just like I'm gonna do, but do it individually. So you could just lay out nine of these or so, layer it like I'm gonna do and put a lid on it, put it into the fridge and serve it up later. However, what I like to do is make it up in one big batch and just scoop it out either as I need it or if I'm doing a pop-up, scoop it out a couple of hours before the event into one of those pots, put the lid on and just hand them out there when they get ordered. The reason why I like doing that is you get a real kind of messy, unperfect texture that I think works really, really well. It breaks up some of those wafers or those sponge fingers a little bit more and I really like the aesthetic of it. So I'm gonna do it this way. We're gonna make it up in this bowl. So first off, we're gonna go down with Vanilla wafers, because we're gonna be taking a scoop right from the top all the way down to the bottom. You don't need to worry about making sure these layers are nice and even. If I have a lot of these wafers left over at the end, then I could just put them on top. It doesn't matter. We're all gonna get roughly the same bite. And then we're gonna go on with some of our whipped cream and jello mixture. And then next, we're gonna go in with some sliced banana. So you can use as much or as little banana as you want in this recipe. I personally think that one banana is enough. You might think that this is way too little, but really, you don't need a huge amount of banana to kind of perfume and flavor the whole of this dish. And then we're gonna go back on top with more of these wafers. More cream. You can already see how thick it's gonna be. It's gonna get thicker once it sets as well. More wafers. You could just crunch them up, it doesn't really matter. Banana. Last layer of vanilla wafers. All of this broken stuff, sprinkle it on in between. And in terms of presentation, that looks pretty good if you just whack that out on a table and people can just scoop it out or you can scoop it out. But before you can do that, this needs to go into the fridge. I like to make this in the evening, let it sit in the fridge overnight and serve it maybe from lunchtime the next day. However, it's pretty early in the morning right now and this would be ready in probably somewhere between six to eight hours. What I'm looking for is all of these Nilla wafers to really soften up and turn cakey. Put some cling film on this, stick this in the fridge and we'll be good to go and eat it. So it is actually the next day. I didn't get a chance to eat this last night because we had dinner, it was pretty late and I didn't want this much sugar before going to bed. So this has been sitting overnight in the fridge. Let's open it. So it is looking really good. All of these vanilla wafers have gone nice and cakey and soft. You can just break them apart. And this for me is one of the best things about banana pudding. This basically turns to like a vanilla sponge cake. That mixed with this nice fluffy whipped up cream and jello is just so, so delicious. So obviously you could just scoop this up into bowls, serve it up. When I'm doing things like pop-ups or takeaway nights, I normally put them into these little deli pots uh, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. A nice big portion. Oh. That's good. And you can see like how fluffy it is and all those little bits of vanilla wafer in there. Maybe a little bit more. That looks delicious. And we kept a couple of those vanilla wafers from yesterday and you can just pop it in the top there. Looks nice presentation. I love how fluffy and creamy that looks. Let's give it a try. Mm. Those vanilla wafers are just delicious. It's perfect to eat in summer or any time to be honest. Mm. Now, like I said, just one banana is enough to taste banana flavor throughout this whole thing. I don't know why, but even when you don't get a piece of banana where you take a spoonful, you can smell it and taste it. Mmm. 
So I definitely like the more layered approach where you make them individually. And I do like it when you don't use whipped cream and it's just pure vanilla custard. There's just something about the texture of this that draws me back to it. And it can be easier. It's such an easy recipe. Hopefully that came across in the video. I'd be interested to know in the comments below how you like to make your banana pudding. And let me know if you plan on making this. Or just feel free to call me out in the comments for using box jello. It helps the algorithm anyway. So feel free to do that. And if you've never had banana pudding before, definitely, definitely give it a try. I'm pretty sure you'll love it. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in a week or so for another video.